when um, when you were hired, it was the second time ever that not only an OSU basketball program had an African American head coach, but an OSU athletic program period had a head coach. Um, how does that feel for you specifically? Do you still feel it to this day, the specialty of it? You know, I, I didn't think a ton about that aspect of it, but I, I'm very aware uh, of obviously being an African American and I knew that Coach Hamilton uh, was a head coach here uh, quite a quite a bit ago. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of research on the athletic department as a whole, and so I was unaware that there was one was not one outside of the basketball program. Um, and so, you know, it, it's certainly an honor uh, to be um, the one chosen uh, for this opportunity. Uh, this program has tr tremendous tradition, uh, great history, uh, and I'm glad that I'm able to be the leader. Um, I think obviously it sets a precedent and gives uh, maybe some uh, opportunities for people to, to view you know, the job that I do here. Uh, I've got a great responsibility now uh, because I am in this position, uh, not just because I'm African American, um, but being a young coach, uh, being one that hasn't had a head coaching experience before, to do the job well. Um, and obviously once I do that, some other factors will come into play. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I just try to focus on doing the best that I can because I've got a lot of pride about being the best that I possibly can to do my job. And it's ironic that you talk about Leonard Hamilton because you guys played them earlier this year. And when it was his first year here as the first African-American head coach, he was just a few years younger than yourself. Did you, did you all talk about that at all when y'all met them earlier this year? You know, Coach Hamilton and I spoke um, a couple times over the summer. Uh, and, and he shared some experience that he had while he was here. He still treasures some of the relationships that he was able to build. And Coach Hamilton did a tremendous job uh, in his time here helping this program uh, solidify itself, establish a great recruiting base, and, and put the program in position to have success once he left. Uh, so this program is forever indebted to his time here. But uh, the thing that he did the most was he continued to impact the lives of the people he coached, which is what we get into this business to do. Uh, and a lot of times we are mostly dealing with young African-American kids. Uh, and so, you know, he, he took a lot of pride in that and continues to do so. And I hope to do so as well. And not only just for our African-American student athletes, but for all of them. Uh, I treat all these kids like their own, my own son, uh, who's five years old at this time. And I hope he continues to look up to these players that we have as role models, but the only way to do that is if I set the right example for them on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, we know you're really big about OSU traditions here. We've seen how much the Remember the Ten means to you, what you've done for that. We've seen how you are about Native American heritage. How do you feel about Nancy Rudolph Davis and the impact she's made here on this campus and this university? It's tremendous. I mean, there's been a lot of people that have come here and, and had success, and, and Nancy's certainly right at the top of that list. Uh, so I always try to consider how lucky I am because, you know, I'm here partly because other people paved the way for me to have this opportunity. I try to stress that upon the kids in our program that, you know, we're not here because of any doing of our own. Uh, first, we were blessed with tremendous talent. Uh, and then along the way, we were helped a lot by a lot of different people. Uh, me, I had two great parents, but I also had great teachers and great mentors growing up. Uh, when I was playing and then when I became a coach that helped me uh, and certainly Nancy is one of those people that you just look up to and appreciate the impact that she had you know not only here at the university but in the state of Oklahoma as a whole. Well you talk about your background a lot of us do know that you come had a playing career but a lot of us don't know that you actually graduated with a degree in African American studies. How is that whole going through that program and still juggling being a student athlete? Um, you know what, I'll be honest, school was never really that difficult to me, and I say that you know, with all due respect. Um, I, I enjoyed learning, and that's part of the reason. I still am an avid reader to this day. Uh, when I went to college, now at first, you know, I had a couple different frames of mind. I, I, I thought I wanted to be a business owner. Obviously, I wanted to be a basketball player for a long time, uh, but I always thought beyond the game what I wanted to do. I thought about mortuary science for a little while. I've been always infatuated with you know, the, the process of that. Um, but I wanted to study something that I had a passion for and learned about the history, the heritage uh, of my forefathers was something that was really important to me. So I uh, got my degree in African-American studies and, and learned a lot. Uh, and obviously I went to school in the University of South Carolina, which has a lot of racial history itself. 
um, you know, being a state that was pretty divided and um, until a few years ago still hung uh, the Confederate flag on the state uh, state house. So, um, you know, it means a lot to me that we're seeing some of the progress and that people are starting to have conversations, which are sometimes uncomfortable, but are necessary for growth uh, and improvement in our world. Who are some of those black history heroes that you look at to the most? Uh, there's a lot of them. Um, you know, obviously you start with Martin Luther King. Uh, he's the ultimate icon and everything that he stood for and the way he went about things. Um, I'm not sure that I could have withstood some of the things that he was able to, to have the discipline to take in order to advance um, the, the meaning of what he wanted to represent. Um, you know, but not only him, Megger Evers, who, who died, you know, in, in this whole deal, Emmett Till, names that come up to mind. But in sports, you got Jackie Robinson and Jesse Owens uh, and people who, you know, uh, this world wouldn't be the same without the sacrifices and the commitments and, that they made throughout their lives. Is there any specific quotes that you memorize that you take in every day? from those, some of those guys? I mean, there's a ton. And because I read, um, I could probably you know, pull a lot of them. I just try to treat people the way I want to be treated. Uh, that's the golden rule. It's probably the one that we probably should think about the most uh, as a society that we live in today. Uh, and it's not you know, hard. It's just sometimes easier to do the other, uh, to treat, treat people less than we want to be in order to make ourselves selves feel better. Uh, and I truly try to do that as the leader of this program, is to treat these guys um, like I would have wanted to be treated as a student athlete, uh, but also how one day my own son may be in a position that they're in, and certainly so, so how I want someone to treat him uh, if that day were to come. Now we look at what's a lot that's been going on in the nation recently and even on campus. You have racial incidents on campus from, and then uh, outbursts from the 4%, and then you have the president making controversial statements. You have Kaepernick taking a knee, and this whole uproar about it. What's your whole take on all of this that's been going on recently? Uh, I mean, a lot. some of it's disappointing that, you know, you feel like we've come so far in 2018, we're still having some of the same conversations. However, I would, take, I would tell people to just step back. Um, and if we truly try to evaluate someone else's situation and understand their circumstance and why they feel a certain way, uh, then maybe we can start actually having conversations that can advance the agenda for everybody. Um, I think so many times we kind of guard ourselves uh, because something may hurt us instead of just speaking out to the person who said whatever it was that hurt us and then allowing that person to express why they feel that way. Um, you know, it's hard sometimes for people to get away from the things that they were taught. You know, but when my son was born, he didn't know anything. <laughs> and so that's how we all are when we're babies. Uh, we're taught to hate. And... Unfortunately, we don't take enough advantage of being able to teach people how to love and how to be compassionate and considerate and understand that maybe because we're not from the same place or look exactly the same doesn't make me any better or you any better. Um, it's about all of us having the same opportunities to get better, uh, to work with one another, to create a better society for everybody. And I hope that, you know, as these conversations continue to happen, that those things will start to take place. And I think everything starts with conversation. People don't talk enough anymore uh, and people aren't as receptive about differences between one another uh, as they maybe should be in 2018. It seems like sometimes we're still dealing with the same things that we dealt with, you know, back in, you know, before sla slavery was abolished, unfortunately. And certainly we've come a long way. There's great opportunities. I'm sitting here as a living example of some of the progress um, that the world has made, but there's still a long way to go. So you present yourself and you're such a relatable person. Do your players ever come to you to talk about these incidents that go on because they might feel unsure or not know what to do, especially as a position of a student athlete? They don't know, hey, if I say something, then it could reflect negatively on the university like it's doing in the professional leagues. Do you ever have any of those conversations every now and then? Yeah, I mean, but, but a lot of times it's because I bring it up and, and that's that's part of my responsibility in this field. You know, so much is made about how many games we win or lose on this court. Uh, and really and truly, my job is to educate. Um, my job is to build, is to motivate, is to inspire. Uh, and that's not just in whether we win or lose a game against whoever the opponent is. It's about when these guys leave here and in 10 years when their fathers and husbands and people in the, in commu in the communities that they live in, are they productive? All right. Do they handle their responsibilities? Are they respectful of other people? 
And so I try to constantly remind them that this thing is much bigger than basketball. And basketball is the vehicle that takes us to the place we're trying to go. Uh, and it's incumbent upon me to show them what that looks like and to have my family around so that the young African-American men who sometimes grow up without fathers more disproportionately can know what it looks like for a guy to take care of his children, to know what it looks like for a man to respect his wife uh, and all those type of things. And our kids come from all different backgrounds. We have some kids who grew up with both parents who know exactly what marriage looks like and what it's supposed to mean and represent. And so I don't necessarily have to have those same conversations, but they don't understand the other side, how some kids never experience what two parents in a house look like. Some kids never experience what having one parent in a house looks like. And so again, we have to be receptive of, everybody comes from different places, but we're all people. Uh, we all deserve respect and we all have opportunities to grow and get better if we can, can, can relate and help one another. It seems you've helped build and strengthen a culture of brotherhood on the team and then like a grit and grind mentality. And a, a few weeks ago, you became the first African-American head coach to beat a Bill Self Kansas team in Allen Fieldhouse. And I don't know, cause it's just part of me kind of, it made me think of Glory Road when I was watching that game. And you know, when Texas Western beat Kentucky. Now, obviously this school isn't a, as small of a school like Texas Western, but just the same model, the mentality, the get on the uh, floor mindset that this team, that you instill, that this team has, I just saw a lot of similarities. What do you think on that? Well, th those kids get on the floor because they care. Um, they do that because they think it means something to this program, and they do it because guys before them gave them an opportunity to put that uniform on. Um, yeah, we didn't get a national championship for winning in Allen Fieldhouse, so there may be a little bit of difference between yeah. this one uh, and that one. But, you know, again, I think it's all significant, right? Uh, I'm not going to sit here and deny that the things that I do will change the way people view young African-American head coaches, uh, good or bad. Uh, so I'm constantly aware that I have to represent the best of the best because I don't want whatever I do to negatively impact the next person's opportunity. I want to make sure that whatever I do gives somebody even more of a chance uh, when their time has come. But the key to it is they have to be prepared for their opportunity, right? You know, we want opportunities, but are we doing what it takes for ourselves to put ourselves in position to be prepared for those opportunities? And when we get them, are we ready? And do we take it by the horns and run with it? So uh, I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, and, and I watched Glory Road and thought it was a great movie as well. Great story. I know some of the guys uh, who, who played there, and, and obviously they've had a lot of impact on college basketball uh, since then. Um, but it's about continuing to make that progress, continuing to understand that we all continue to have a responsibility to advance the game and the cause in a cultural way. Well, you and I are two big city guys. I mean, you know, it's freezing rain outside. I'm sure you're accustomed to that. You're from Brooklyn, New York, and so, you know, y'all are accustomed to that. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, so we're not too much accustomed to that. But coming from Brooklyn, you know, the tough worksmen, workers' men mentality that y'all have. And then Atlanta, you know, which has a culture of its own, is a fast-rising city. But we both have come here to kind of, like, settle down and, like, start uh, our new path. So how's it been for you settling down here in Stillwater coming from that big city like Brooklyn? Well, that's great. I mean, Stillwater is a great community. Um, there are very few bright lights and big buildings here, um, but it's a great city, a uh, great college town. Uh, it's been a great place for my family to live. We really enjoyed it. Uh, and the thing that makes Stillwater great is the people. And I think that's what's unique about here is, you know, like the Remember the 10 deal, you know, people hold on to that. Those families literally will never be forgotten. They'll always be a part of this program, but it only happens if people really embrace each other, if people are really compassionate about what happens to someone else. Uh, because it's easy for us to, something happens, we grieve about it momentarily, and then everybody goes on about their own lives, never to think about it again. That family always lives with that. Uh, and so for this community to embrace that, just another sign, another example of, you know, what it's like for people to come here and feel like they never want to leave, um, feel like they want to stay here forever and be always a part of this community. And even people, coaches who I, I know who have coached here before, like a Leonard Hamilton, still speaks very highly of this place because of that. It's such a unique place and that people always respectful, respectful of each other and always try to look out for each other. Do you think the ease that you had in settling down has made it easier for recruiting for when you go to like those big cities like your hometown or if you go to an Atlanta or if you go to a Chicago or Dallas, the fact that you're able to, can you feel like you can 
accurately portray that to a potential recruit? Yeah, I mean, the one thing that helps is it's been done before. You know, one of our all-time great players is from inner city Chicago, Tony Allen. Uh, grit and grind guy, and Coach Sutton saw something in him uh, that maybe the kid, honestly, didn't see in himself at the time. And now, however many years later, he's one of the all-time best players to play in the NBA. Just one example, but there's been guys from Dallas. There's been guys from New York City. Kamari Murphy was here not too long ago uh, and had great success before he ultimately transferred, but he really loved his time here. Uh, there's been guys from Atlanta. My, my parents actually live just north of Atlanta in Gwinnett County now. Uh, so we spent a lot of time recruiting in that area as well. Um, but this program and this school has a great reputation in a lot of parts of the country. And a big part of it is because of OSU athletics and Oklahoma State basketball. What do you want your defining legacy to be when it looks, you look at your time here at OSU? When it's all said and done, uh, I want every one of my players to know that I committed everything I could to them that I gave them every opportunity to have success in their life. And we may not win every game and we may not hang 25 banners in here. The goal is to ultimately hang a championship banner in here, no question about it. But it's bigger than that. And, and I don't ever want to be a guy that's only considered successful whether he wins or loses games. Uh, I want my impact on these guys' lives to be such that they call me when it's time to get married and they want me at the wedding. They call me when the, the children are being born and they want me to be a part of that. Uh, because if that's happening, then I know that I did my part, that they, they know I care about them and want to know those things and want me to continue to be a part of their lives forever. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.